Uncomfortable day in the city of Providence yesterday. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Welcome in. Uh, nice to have you in on this Tuesday evening. Yesterday was a, I don't know, a very strange afternoon in the city of Providence. Uh, reports are near 100 people. I don't know. I was there. I don't think it was 100 people, but anyway, uh, they gathered on the uh, uh, the corner of Brook and George in the Fox Point neighborhood of Providence to discuss. You know, some nasty business. Here, here's a headline. And I'll just run this story for you and uh, scratch my head with Dan McGowan, because I think both of us were doing that yesterday. Racism of any kind will not be tolerated in our streets. A large crowd gathered on the east side of Providence to decry a flyer that Providence Mayor Jorge Lorza says was left indoors around Brown University over the weekend. Despicable and disgusting. Racism. The flyer is titled Negro Crime and has a photo of Providence NAACP President Jim Vincent making unproven allegations against him. Beware. If you think that a pamphlet or a flyer is going to make any difference other than bringing us more together than we've ever been before, then you are sadly mistaken. Vincent said he and Alorza initially didn't want to give the flyer more publicity when they saw photos circulating on social media, but then they saw the inside, which features photos and names of four local African Americans. This wasn't a personal attack. This was an attack on an entire community. Including an underage teen involved in an incident at Central High School last year and his mother making accusations about both of them. When we looked at the inside when they were targeting four other people, you know, including a minor, we felt that maybe it's, it, it was a little bit too serious to, to kind of uh, wish that it would just go away on its own. The message was getting around, and it's really important to let folks know that we're not going to no allow hate to become normalized. I don't know. There's, there's, there's something, there's, I don't know, there's something really strange about this. Welcome. Good hey, to see you, buddy. You? Thank you. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the state of the city, which is actually, if you're watching this at 730, it's probably just wrapping up. Uh, Mayor Lorza is scheduled to be here on Thursday, so I'm looking forward to that. It's been a long time since he's been in here. Uh, the work it takes for someone to put that pamphlet together and the acumen that they had in the midst of the hateful things that they were saying... Yeah. Because there's more than just that front page. There's there's, there's specificity. Inside, yeah. <clears throat> well, it feels. I don't know. It feels. It certainly was well prepared. Now, it, the quality of the product is pretty poor. But you're talking about several different incidents, several um, accusations that have. Um, they're not just completely baseless in the sense that they've never, they weren't just making them for the first time, right? So somebody did yeah, research. You got several young people who have got a bad rap sheet mm -hmm. that, they, that they point out, and then you got the kid that got in the, in, in the, in the, in the skirmish with the vice principal there at Central High right, School, yeah. and his mother, who is quoted in it, and I don't know if the quotes are legitimate or whether the quotes are, uh, the, there's, a, there's a fabricated quote attributed, I don't know if there's a basis, I don't know whether, there's a derogatory quote, quote right, in there. Right. She's defend in the pamphlet. She's defending her son. Right. Like he didn't do anything. Right. And and the vernacular, the the bad abonics, right. the the whole thing that's in there. I don't. Did she ever? Did she? She did defend him at, at some juncture. I think in the whole news yes, cycle. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, she was. On, she talked to reporters and stuff like that. So, yeah. But but it's like it's like um it's like a sick. It, the whole thing is like a sick SNL skit. In other words, it's it's a demented satire mm -hmm. on all the five players. Yeah. And, and but it's it's informed. Yeah, absolutely. It's informed. Absolutely. Yes. Um. And it's a critique of, right, you know, what it is is, you know, Providence is, is a, you know, bad place because of this, you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, it, it, like you said, informed, uh, but obviously didn't know, we don't know who did it yet. And so everybody has to ask the question, 
you know, if a tree falls in the woods and there's no one there to hear it, does it make any noise? Right. Flyers, how many flyers do we know? We have no idea. And the number of people that I've talked to that all sort of point to one specific photo that was taken on Facebook of a flyer, a lot of, a lot of it goes back to the one that went viral, you know, locally viral. Um, I don't know how many people I can. I, so the so the piece of paper, the fly. Did you see a piece of paper yesterday when you were covering this press no. conference? Nope. I saw uh, p uh, screenshots of them. Screenshots. Two screens. Two screenshots. Yeah. And you were kind enough to share that with me. Yeah. You know, for news gathering purposes, <laughs> I didn't really want to we're read buddies. it. We're uh, buddies. <laughs> but it's not like the 70, 80, 90 people, whoever, how, what, how, however many people were at this event yesterday. It's not like they were all holding That's pamphlets. Right. That's right. Like, I got this in my door. That's right. None of that. Nope. nope. So this is a social media dispersed viral yeah. Yeah, pamphlet. Yeah, it pops up, um, I believe, I think I saw it on Saturday morning for the first time. People start to share it. I think some of the blogs kind of picked it up. It starts to get out even more. Um, there... I think Mr. Vincent said yesterday that he thinks it was distributed uh, around Pawtucket, around McCoy Stadium, on the east side, and potentially on the west end of Providence. I have no way to prove that. I haven't talked to anybody on the west end that said, oh, yeah, yeah, I got it, or anyone around McCoy that got it. It just seems to me that if you have a flyer distribution of this, you know, inflammatory ilk, that the people who received it would be outraged over the receipt of it, mm -hmm. and you'd have a percentage at least, even 20 percent. Say there were 100 flyers in the Fox Point neighborhood. Right. You'd have 15, 20 people who were aghast saying, yeah, I got this, and would be coming to this thing, identifying themselves yeah. as, as livid, that this was placed at their doorstep. Mm -hmm. well, there's none of that. that that's true, right. And, and I, I, don't know what I, what I don't know what question I'm raising other than the whole thing is discomforting, the attention brought to it. Look, the message is out, outrageous. Right. Awful. It's outrageous. Right. It's just outrageous. But why do I feel like someone's pulling somebody's chain here? Yeah, I mean, I think the fact that there's nobody that had it with them, right, that, that was something that was striking to me when you asked around, you know, you, the, the people who were... Uh, sending me pictures, we're sending the same picture, right? So it wasn't as though, you know, you send me something that you got from somebody and somebody else. It's a lot of the same picture. So that does, it raises questions. At the same time, the message was pretty awful. It definitely did go viral, again, locally viral. And so, you know, from my perspective, it was out there. People were upset about it. I think there's news value to it. But I do still question it's whether no or question. not it, you know. Look, well, listen, when the, when the mayor and Moore are gathered, the press come in their midst. Absolutely. I'm not questioning. There are, you know, we've had debates over whether something is actually news coverable. Sure, yeah. No question. I mean, there's no question. How the NAACP, you know, is, quote, victimized. The mayor's out there. The mm -hmm. commissioner of public safety. The chief didn't say anything, but he was in there. Yep, the Captain Verde yeah. was there because I saw him said yep. hello. I, it's definitely something worth covering. I just don't know what the objective is. You know, I asked the, the, the Commissioner of Public Safety about it, Steve Perry, yesterday on the radio, and, you know, for, for the radio, and I said, what's the, what, what's the, what's the, what's the motive? Uh, hatred. Yeah. Huh. The answer that uh, Jim Vincent gave to me when I asked the same question to him was, he said he felt like he'd been, he, he'd been very public fairly recently on a number of different media outlets, including the, the front page of the Providence Journal, on some uh, their story on sort of the 13 people react to, to Trump in their in his first year, he was pretty critical of Trump. He talked about white supremacy, that kind of thing, and he feels like maybe people saw it. Um, I asked him, you know, does the Bishop Hendrickson situation, which he was pretty public about, hmm. you know, play a role into it? He said he wasn't sure. He thinks it's just a collection of my name's been in the news a lot lately, so people. Um, you know, maybe somebody must have you know seen it, and, and, and the been, notion uh, that uh, you know the, there's a reference to his financial issues at the NAACP. Yeah. I mean, last year, I mean, we even covered it here. There were a couple of um, uh, folks who still to this day believe that Jim Vincent hasn't properly run the NAACP. That's right, yeah. I didn't find their their um, arguments 
I found them interesting, but not necessarily credible or documentable. Right. So, and he was livid that they got any attention. Yeah. Uh, so they've had an internal squabble at the NAACP. Absolutely, they have. Yeah. Um, I think it's about direction of the organization largely. But yeah. those 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 people that were involved in that conversation, uh, a were black. <laughs> I, I don't know why they would find any constructive yeah, it doesn't make sense to thing to then create this racist thing. Right. And many of the people who were were upset the divide within the NAACP were there yesterday kind of standing united, right? So Okay. I, I guess the the elephant in the room question is, is there any chance that this is contrived to create an opportunity to look like you're battling something that doesn't exist? Or, or listen, racism is a systemic problem that exists, mm -hmm. but the specificity of this thing. Yeah, you look. It's a it's a fair question. It's one that I've gotten a lot of. Um, obviously, yeah, really? I don't have know. you gotten a lot of? I've it? gotten a lot of it. Yeah, I've gotten a lot of. This doesn't feel right just because of the fact that people weren't, you know, didn't have lots of copies of it. Um, I think even people at the press conference yesterday were just at least, you know, it's they, they found it strange. That said, everyone just kind of falls back, and I tend to agree with them on the idea that well, no matter who put it out, it was awful. Community gathered, you know, it's worth it for people to decry what happened. And Olorza, I mean, and I'm going to talk to the mayor about this on Thursday. You know, in, not, not in his presentation necessarily, but in the Q and A. You know, he talks about President Trump. Mm -hmm. He also called it a crime, which is not being it's investigated not a as cr as a crime at all. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, well that's, that, I mean, I know this feels like an open-ended, weird, strange conversation that we're having, but the, the event was an open-ended, weird, strange, yeah. I mean, unfortunate right. and, and unnecessary and disgraceful content. Mm -hmm. But without authorship, it's, it's really hard. And yeah. without distribution proof, it's really hard to figure out what's going on here. So I'm sure if there's anybody that's going to figure it out, it'd be Dan. <laughs> Um, let me tell you about my friends at the Navigant Credit Union here, and uh, in case you're just trying to figure out your whole financial life and you'd like to be able to do it right in the palm of your hand, Navigant Credit Union has the Card Valet app that allows you to do that. Every bit of banking sophistication you ever want to have, literally right here. Go to the Card Valet app and download it and become a member. At, 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 easy for me to say, at Navigant Credit Union, member NCUA. Be right back with Dan on the state of the city and uh, the governor. Consolidating power. Stay with us. We're committed to community policing, uh, but we're also very evidence-driven. So wherever it is that crime is happening, we're on top, top of it at a very granular level, making sure that if something, if there's a pattern developing in a certain street or a certain neighborhood, that we have extra, extra enforcement and extra, you know, folks out there. Uh, patrolling. Uh, Mayor Lorza, whose state of the city is tonight, and he'll be here Thursday. I just want to go backwards for a second. Um, you know, Dan and I were talking during the break, and I, you, can't, you asked a funny question. Um, was our last conversation just two, you know, I'll say it, two white guys who don't get what the problem is? No, it's two, two guys in the media who, who are pretty veteran and understand how these things generally go. Mm -hmm. And there's some missing stuff in it. That's the true. content yeah. is deplorable, my yeah. God. But, you know, people say, well, you know, we don't really need to know that. We just need to stamp out the message. Well, sometimes, sometimes folks are looking for a platform. Yeah. And without, the, it, without X, you wouldn't have a big You rally. wouldn't have the platform. You wouldn't have it. So, yeah. So that, that's, that's, that's kind of the discomfort that I'm, I'm talking about yeah. here. Um, crime issues in general, are they part of the state of the city message? I would venture to guess no, judging by years of covering mayor's state of the cities, right? If this is usually your time to stand in front of the city council and be a cheerleader and talk about all, all the great things you're accomplishing. Is it possible that the mayor will say, uh, it, it's possible the mayor will take the approach of trying to remind people that over time, crime has actually dropped. In fact, even in January where we've talked about 
all of you know the crime and the shootings that, that, that have happened, violent crime is down this January compared to last January. They had a bad couple of week period. They had a bad couple of week period. In, in, a, in a shooting increase, there's no question about that. I think there's a chance he may highlight that, um, but he's also conscious of not, you know, he, he knows that every time he says crime is down and then there's a shooting the next day, he looks like a liar, um, even though that's not actually how this works. But uh, he looks bad when he says those things, you know. Uh, it's kind of strange to be talking about a presentation that he's already made. We taped this program in the early afternoon, so uh, we'll talk with the, the mayor himself on Thursday about the state of the city message. But in general, there's a new city council president. Mm -hmm. is, there a, is there a feeling of, you know, thumbs up going on right now in town? I think there is, at least with, you know, within, when the mayor looks in the mirror, let's say, I think he feels good about where things are. The thing that you'll certainly hear him say, he'll make the case on Thursday on his show, on your show, is in the short term, the city's finances are, are just fine. Surplus two years in a row, things like that, they're, they are paying their bills. Problem is, is that long term, you've got a billion dollar pension liability that uh, they do not have an answer to, with the exception of an idea to sell the water supply system or lease it and find a way to monetize it. That's their big idea. That's the one thing that they think is the answer to their problems going forward. Um, and the truth is, it's, it's hard to explain, I try to write about this a lot, is it's possible for both things to be true. Right? It's possible to have uh, the city running okay today and also a billion dollar problem that you're staring at. Um, and so uh, that's the challenge. The problem that he gets into is every time he comes on your show or talks to me and says, we're doing great, and what he'll say at his state of the city, you've get, you, you get the teachers union to say, oh, if you're doing great, give us a raise. And this is this fight that, that ends up playing When's out. That, they're, they're, they were scheduled to protest. Uh, that's right. What's their problem? Yeah, their issue, the, the truth is, and this is an interesting thing, you know, I, whenever I cover union battles or union election or uh, you know union contract fights it's usually there's a purpose right so there's firefighters the mayor said look there's an overtime problem i want to fix it D whether he did or didn't didn't matter he he had an issue he wanted to address it in the teachers contract there is not a big policy conversation that's happening it's not 5 minutes extra for the school day or extending the school year it seems to come down to money they know they have to give some sort of raise in the contract because that's typically what you do for, for just about any employee. The question is when it happens, how much happens, and they, we don't know what those parameters look like. We don't know what negotiations look like. The contract's been expired since August 31st, so you know, we're now going on many months, um, and they don't seem to have an end uh, result, which is why you uh, are an end in, in, you know, in sight, um, which is why you have them picketing. We're just, it's not just the city of Providence. We are just so dysfunctional when it comes to teacher contracts. Absolutely. Um, there ought to be deadlines pre the end of school years. Yeah. Um, it, it, why, why a teacher's contract expires on August 31st is beyond me. Right. Uh, it's literally a timing thing, right? It's just, it's literally when they, they set it, but yeah. it does make an issue. Well, the whole, the whole systemic problem of having that, that pension over his head is, is something that is, uh, is going to be relieved by a one-off, perhaps sale of an asset, yeah. the water supply board, but it's also going to have to come with state cooperation. There's that's no right. possible way that that's going to be relieved. That's right. What's the actual run out of money timeline for the pension? It's a good do, question. Do they say? There really, there, there isn't, because it's not a run out of money problem. What it is is every year the city has to pay, the, in the upcoming year, for example, has to pay $78 million to the pension fund, right? That number is going to grow three and a half, four percent every single year. So it's not about running out of money. It's about hitting a point where the city has to pay so much money to its retirees that it literally crowds out the funding of government, employee funding, you know, things. But like the seventy-eight that. million dollars is contemplated when he talks about a surplus. Absolutely. So yeah. that's an operating output. Yeah that still enables them to have a surplus. That's right, that's right. That grows every year. And, and what's the surplus going to be? A few so million dollars they, at the most? They ended last 2017 with a five and a half million dollar yeah. surplus. Okay. Um, and they, you know, the goal typically every year is to have four or five million in, in because then you can add it to your rainy day fund when you have a problem like a But those kind of surpluses isn't. aren't going to put the dent in the big principal Absolutely unfunded not. liability. Nope. That's right. Um, and right. and you know, what you need. And welcome for, to Rhode Island, by the way. <laughs> well, and for folks, what, what, what's really important, or the reason why this water idea is the one that they push, is because it's an infusion of cash. How much can they get? 
thinks he can get between three and four hundred million. And think about what that means. You put three or four hundred million dollars into a fund, now it's returning money, so you're investing it, then you're still making contributions every year. The idea is that eventually, you know, if you have a good run of returns, you'll have a, a more stable yeah, piece of funding. I, I, you know, I, I, I'll talk to him about that later in the week. I'll tell you one thing, though. Selling an asset to chase your tail. Right. Oh, it's not advised by any means. It's because when you don't have no more asset left, and you don't got anything. that's a problem. Right. Uh, the governor is uh, making some interesting moves. Dan's on that. We'll talk about it next. Governor Orlando is doing some interesting things here uh, on the political level. We only have a few minutes, but she's uh, she's faking left and going right, that's sort of, right? That's an interesting play by her. What she's doing is the, her campaign has uh, struck an agreement with the Providence Democratic City Committee. When you think of these city committees, think of them just like you'd think of the state Democratic Party or the state Republican Party. They have the same powers, the same ability to raise you know, more money than your average uh, individual can receive. And what she's doing is, is she's struck this deal where she's agreed to help them fundraise, to maybe hire staff. Um, and what's interesting about it is the Providence Democrats have no money. They have $100, in the, $122 in their bank account. They haven't raised very much money over the last couple of years. They have very little power, despite the fact that Providence is a heavily, always Democratic city. Um, they don't have a ton of influence. The governor comes in and is able to put in, a, you know, let's say, a couple hundred thousand dollars that gives them uh, an enormous. How does she influence. stroke that check? Can the, her campaign can legally stroke a check to another committee. What her what she can do is go when she goes and fundraises, whether it's locally or nationally, she can say, Dan, I need you to write me a check for a thousand dollars to my campaign. I also need you to give ten thousand dollars for party building purposes to the state committee or to the Providence committee. That's the, where the big money comes from. It's it's big contributions. And what will what will the Democratic City Committee now that it'll be flush with with uh, buco bucks be doing with that money? I mean, their argument is, oh, we're going to help Democrats up and down the ticket in the city. In the city, potentially outside of the city. There's no rules on what they can and cannot do. Um, what's interesting is it creates this dynamic within the city government of city council members saying, well, wait, wait a minute, what if? What if they're going to use money against me? What if they're going to do this? So there's a lot of anxiety. The, my phone's Normally, the, the hook. shared wealth would be with the state Democratic Committee. That's right. And the problem is the Speaker of the House and she not getting along. A little bit and more And the power, Speaker yeah. generally controls the state Democratic Committee. That's right. Right. That's right. And there's a big, right, the, they have this coordinated campaign. That's what they talk about. Democrats and Republicans do this. You know, heading into, especially between September primary and November general election, where they everybody runs together and everybody works hard together. Right. Potentially, you could do a coordinated campaign from Providence. So she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to fight over resources or objectives with the speaker. Right. So she bypassed them. Yeah. Yeah. Is she this smart, or is her campaign people? It's a pretty smart move. It is. Uh, now, the thing is, 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 does it turn out to all just be a threat? Hey, look what I can do. Now you cooperate on the state side. We'll see when money comes in, right? Next couple of months, if there's a bunch of money in the Providence Democratic Party that they've never had before, you know where it came from. Smart move. Hmm. She's trying to ward off a primary for sure. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yes. I mean, if I was her, I wouldn't want a primary either. No. Will she get one? Link, I talked to Link Chafee the other day and just asked him, and he. I don't think so. Still, you know, we'll never know. I, I don't think so. We'll see. You're up to date. Obvious. Appreciate it. <laughs> Final word when we come back. Uh, despite Dan and I having a little bit of a head scratcher over what really happened with this flyer distribution where we can't see any flyers, the people who are offended by it uh, will be here tomorrow, uh, at least a couple of the players in that rally, to discuss you know, race relations in the city of Providence. I think that's always a constructive conversation, so that will be tomorrow. We'll see you on the radio at 3 on WPRO. Thanks so much for checking in with us. Have a great night.